Good morning to you. Today is Sunday, March 20th, 2022. Spring is almost here. <clears throat> this is an online Sunday school lesson for Aceville Baptist Church from Anderson, South Carolina. Uh, my name is Johnny Smith. I'll be your teacher again today. Before we get started today, let's have our prayer request. What I have on the list so far is uh, pray for the country of Ukraine and those people over there. Uh, I heard a quote this week that has just broken my heart. The president of Ukraine talked to the United States government and issued a public statement. For those that left your family behind and lost loved ones to this terrorism, we grieve with you as we fight for democracy. Please help us fight for democracy. I'm praying every day, uh, several hours during the day, I'm stopping and having a prayer for the Ukrainians. Pray for those that's sick. Pray for all our church folks and our friends, our families that are sick. Uh, Lord knows the needs and we pray we'll send them healing. The Lord will send them healing their way. Pray for those suffering bereavement. Lord, send comfort to these families who have lost loved ones at this time when they most need it. Pray for our country. I'm praying every day uh, that our country's leaders uh, that they would find and that they would come to know God. I pray if nothing else, they might possibly even find my Sunday school lesson uh, about God online and maybe see God being shared and that they would start to use God's influence upon making their decisions. Our leaders of our country right now need God's help. That's the only hope we have. The title of today's lesson is Confronting. A big thought to the title of this week's lesson, and this is basically what the lesson is about. A person's response to the gospel will define his or her actions, thoughts, and talk in their future. Let me tell you about a man to start today's lesson. This man was a Pharisee. He was convinced Jesus was a false prophet. He was convinced the gospel was a dangerous false teaching that would get him killed. He participated in the stoning of a man who did believe in the gospel. His main mission in life was to destroy the new gospel churches. He hunted those that believed this gospel so that he would be able to kill them. One thing you could say about this man, he believed in his heart he was doing right and he was convinced to remain faithful to his beliefs. All his actions, his directions, and everything he needed in life was dedicated to standing up for this cause against this man called Jesus. Then, then, then he met a man called Jesus. Jesus blinded his eyes and told him he was going to change his life and he was going to be, he was going to be called to spread the gospel. Almost immediately, with the help of a man called Ananias, he got his sight back and he became a believer and a follower of Jesus. Then he took on a new set of actions, directions, and beliefs for his future life. From that time on, he was completely dedicated to the gospel of Jesus, and he took actions to spread that belief to everyone else around him. He was characterized with absolute zeal for what he now believed. He dedicated his life to spreading the gospel. Two different, very different stories from two different stages in one person's life. <clears throat> but if you'll notice in both parts, he was fully dedicated to what he believed in. You may know now who I'm talking about. The man I'm speaking about is Paul, the disciple of Jesus. Today, we're going to continue our study in 1 Thessalonians this week, we'll finish chapter 2. Let's study now 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verses 13 and 14. This is the first part of our lesson, and I've entitled it, Received. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. 
For ye brethren became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. As we study these two verses, remember the gospel is new. First Thessalonians was written approximately, and we talked about this a couple weeks ago, around 51 AD. Jesus was crucified and arose to heaven in 33 AD. Before leaving, he had changed the remaining 11 disciples and he had charged them to spread the new gospel around the world. Before ascending, he also called Saul, now called Paul, to spread the gospel. This gospel changed a lot of Jewish worship practices. This gospel proclaimed Jesus and God as one and also proclaimed that when Jesus ascended to heaven to be at the right hand of the Father, that he would send the Holy Spirit down to live amongst us in the hearts of men who believed. Thus, the Trinity is one, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, I looked it up this week. Finally, I did some study on this. It was around... Uh, Okay, the Old Testament was finished before Jesus was born. The first widespread edition of the entire Bible was assembled by St. Jerome around 400 AD, and it was written in Latin. Thus, you had to proceed to uh, interpret it in the different languages. The English version of the Bible did not come around until around 1000 AD. The first version around 400 AD in Latin was called the Vulgate. That was just a piece of trivia I thought I'd offer to you. Paul had begun teaching the news gospel on his missionary journeys. Three are documented. The way he taught was his words, his actions, and his life. The New Testament had not yet been written yet. So this title of our lesson for these two verses is called Received. As Paul taught, people received the word. They received the word, but they might have responded in different ways. Some were skeptical, some were agnostic, and some believed. In verse 13, Paul thanks the folks at the church at Thessalonica because they received the word of God as he taught it. Why did he thank God that they, that they believed? Because Paul knew from his previous life as Saul, that there were many other philosophies they could believe in. They could believe in false gods, false worship practices, false sacrificial systems. Paul knew like him, if they believed in these fake philosophies, they would dedicate their lives as he did when he was like Saul to these false philosophies. So he thanks God for them. In verse 14, he says, thanks to God, to those that believed, they have became imitators of God to other churches in the area. And yes, like me, Paul, who have suffered persecution for spreading the gospel, you too have had to face the same persecution for spreading the gospel. Even at the hands of your own friends, neighbors, and even family members, you continued to spread the gospel. Today, it is so sad. Believers today face similar opportunities to spread the gospel, and yet they face similar persecution and opposition to the gospel. I saw this or an article this week where Preacher Lou, who we had here at Aceville one time to speak, was ridiculed at a store by a non-believer. I saw where he noted that he just prayed for that man that God would come to him. It's sad also to see our country leaders deny God in their actions and their deeds. It's up to us, fellow believers, like these believers at Thessalonica, to imitate God in our everyday actions and talk and know the word so we too can be imitators of God. The second part of our lesson is called Rejected, and it comes from chapter 2, verses 15 and 16 who both kill the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God 
and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins always, for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. Rejected. Anyone who has attempted to spread the gospel and to share the gospel with someone else knows that many will not accept Christ in faith. And yes, many will hear the message, make a decision, and never look back to that poor decision again. They will dedicate their lives to not following Christ. Verse 15 says, yes, we have those around us still. They were the ones who persecuted Jesus, those that drove nails in his feet and his arms, those that actually killed Jesus on the cross. Their mission in life was to rebel against Jesus and then convince others to rebel against Jesus. Again this week, I saw a TV commercial while watching the news of a man who stated he was agnostic and he was not afraid to burn in hell. But he also stated, and he asked for others to join him. He asked for others to join him. I pray as in verse 16, Lord, help us today to study your word more. Lord, help us to know your word better so that when we have the smallest change, we can spread Jesus to the sinful world that we live in. Help us to prevent anyone from rejecting Jesus. The third part of our lesson is called Focused. It comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 17 through 20. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once again, but Satan hindered us. But what is our hope, our joy, our crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus that is coming? For ye are and ye are our glory and our joy. Even though he was persecuted and run out of many towns for preaching the gospel, Paul continued to spread the gospel. Paul was only in Thessalonica three weeks, as we studied a few weeks ago. But in his letter back to them, he says he prays for them every day for the chance to return to see them. Paul was not able to return so he says he prayed for them. He gave God the glory and honor for them. Paul says it was the devil that prevented him from making the return trip back to them. But yet Paul wanted them to know that they were his reason. He worked so hard, suffered so much. The friends he had at Thessalonica was the byproduct of his ministry. They were the purpose of of his ministry. They made him proud. They gave him joy and hope for the future. The conclusion today, and I quote, and this comes out of the teacher's book, said, conclude your lesson this way, and I'm going to do that. Every church has people and things they can be proud of. Let me quote that one more time. Every church has people and things they can be proud of. And it asks us to take some time to reflect on some of these. As I reflected personally, I made my list of the people and things that I'm proud of. I'm proud of Preacher D for his wisdom, for his love, for his desire to know the word better so he can share it like Paul with us. And I'm also proud of him for the way he loves our church. I'm proud of having Miss Connie for her music and her music leadership that always adds so much to our worship services. <clears throat> I'm proud we still have Sunday school. Proud of those who prepare lessons each week and teach our babies, our kids, our teenagers, and the adults the word. For you remember, as Paul said, what people know and put in their hearts and accept, they will dedicate their lives to doing the same thing. 
maybe the babies, the kids, teenagers, and us adults learn the word to be able to share the word. I'm also proud, and I'm a little bit personal here, but I'm proud we're able to have our online Sunday school lessons for those that can't come and be with us live in Sunday school. May it be a blessing. I checked this week and we're only a few weeks away from being two solid years of a long line Sunday school lesson live each Sunday. It's a blessing to me and hopefully to you today, those that listen and those that take care and, and encourage us to have our online Sunday school. I'm proud of the Aceville Missions is what we, our church does. We do a great job given what we can, what we receive into the storehouse to those in need and to those that help spread the gospel. As our preacher said, I hope we're able to find some way to where we can give more to those missions. Finally, last but most powerful, I'm proud to those in our church who pray and offering prayers to the things we want to take to God's ears through Jesus Christ. Several people have testified they knew that they had people praying for them. I pray today that each of you reflect on what we do right and to be thankful to God for what our church stands for and the people in it that help spread the gospel. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to teach your word. We pray in some small way that today's lesson has been a blessing to each one of these people. We pray that you forgive us of our personal sins. Lord, cleanse our hearts as we go forth now. First in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And see you next week.